these, these things are part of what uh, psychologists call system two cognition, the ability to reason, the ability to consciously uh, construct hypothetical scenarios, future possibilities, potentially um, think about uh, a, a somebody who is uh, trying to explain a murder, right? So some, some, sometimes it's about the past. We're trying to imagine what happened that could explain what we saw, right? Or what might happen in the future if I do this or that, right? So this kind of thing, um, we're starting to build into our, our machine learning systems, but, but we have a long way to go. And it's connected to another aspect, which we don't do very well in machine learning right now, which is uh, deal with causality. So causality is something interesting because it's fundamentally more than uh, just capturing the structure of the data distribution. So the joint distribution of all the things we observe is what normally machine learning is about. Machine learning has been about figuring out the dependencies, the statistical dependencies between variables, being able to predict one thing from another thing. But causality contains one more piece of information, which is that A is cause of B and B is cause of C and so on. And it turns out that it's, uh, it, it's not enough to know the joint distribution in order to figure out information that you have in the causal structure. And it doesn't matter what the causal structure is so long as you only care about one distribution because that's the thing. But that's the, the fixed uh, distribution. You know, have the joint distribution, you know everything you need to know. But if the distribution is going to change, like somebody comes in the room and closes the lights, all right, uh, now the pixels coming to my eyes are going to be very different. And somehow um, I need to adapt my model of the world. Maybe it's going to be dark in order to cope with that. Um, there was a cause and effect um, thing there where, where an agent uh, intervened in the world and modified one little thing that had a big effect on, on many other things. And, uh, and, and most humans will be able to cope with that change without having to relearn everything. Whereas our current machine learning systems tend to be uh, fragile to these things and you basically have to retrain them on, oh, well, okay, so now I have to collect data on dark rooms, right? Um, we don't want that. Um, and, but, but if we uh, build models that capture this, okay, let's put this one down. <laughs> Two examples, yes. Well, now I know it doesn't work to put it there. Um, so, so causality I'll tell you more about. Um, another thing that is missing and that uh, lots of people um, think about is um, uh, common sense, and we don't even know how to define that. But basically, there are the things that um, people know and uh, that help them really understand when I speak. When, when somebody reads a sentence, they use their understanding of how the world works to capture what the true meaning of that sentence is. It, and some of that meaning isn't something easily accessible to machines. So um, I'll come back to that. Um, there's uh, interesting notions in psychology uh, that I'm going to talk about, system one and system two. System one is all the intuitive stuff that we know but we can't communicate, and uh, all of the computation that is unconscious, whereas system two is the rest, so what is conscious and that we can verbalize. Um, so with language, we can communicate things that are accessible to our system two computation, but there's a lot of things going on in our mind to which we don't have access. And, and so some of the common sense is this knowledge that we don't even communicate with language. So even if we train a machine with an infinite amount of text, it wouldn't have access to that kind of uh, system one knowledge. 